Not too long ago, if we wanted to get access to Cisco Modeling Labs for free, then we could go out to the Cisco DevNet Sandbox and we could uh, reserve a CML lab and it was a great option. However, today it's almost impossible to ever get one of those reservations for a uh, DevNet Sandbox CML lab, but I've got good news for you. Cisco has come out with a free version of the actual Cisco Modeling Labs that you can run locally. Hi, my name is Kevin Wallace, and in this video, I want to talk to you about what is called the free tier of CML. We'll discuss what features it has. I'll show you how to get your own free copy of CML. Then I'll do a demo showing you, once you have it installed, here's how to create a basic topology. And if you want to save that topology or import another topology, we'll take a look at how to do both of those. And by the way, if you enjoy this content, then I invite you to check out our All Access Pass. That's our yearly subscription, which gives you access to over 30 on-demand courses covering a wide range of topics, everything from enterprise to cloud collaboration, cybersecurity, and also your career. Now let's get into our discussion of the CML free tier offering. First, what features does it have? Well, it has a maximum of five nodes that we can run at once. And that's as compared to 20 nodes maximum that we can have with the personal version. But the good news is if we're using an unmanaged switch, that does not count against those five nodes, nor does an external connector if you want to connect this out to a physical network. There is a smaller set of images that comes with the free tier license, and I'm showing you those on screen. For example, we don't have any Nexus switches or a CSR 1000V available. And the Ethernet interfaces that run on the router and the switch in this free tier, they run at 10 megabits per second. So that might take some getting used to, but the good news is this never expires. And I don't want you to be overly concerned about having a maximum of five nodes. When I first heard that, I thought, well, I have 20 nodes and sometimes I really push the maximum. But the reason I'm pushing the maximum is I'm running multiple lab topologies simultaneously. If I'm teaching a live class, then I'll want to bounce between maybe a spanning tree configuration to an OSPF configuration. And I've got all these topologies running simultaneously, but rarely do I need to have a single topology with more than five nodes, especially if we don't count an unmanaged switch. And I was just brainstorming this and I was looking through some of the topologies in my CCNA course and I was asking myself, could I create this with the free version? And in almost all cases, the answer was yes. Just as a few examples, and this is not comprehensive, but as a few examples, we could set up HSRP, VRRP, or GLBP. We could have one router as the internet. One router is R1, another router is R2. That could be an unmanaged switch. And we might have an Alpine Linux client running as PC1, so that's a total of four nodes. We could also set up a topology like this, where we've got two clients, a router, and the internet and the server, that could be represented with one router running those services, and we could have an unmanaged switch. So that's one, two, three, four devices, and we could use a topology like this to set up access control lists, network time protocol, network address translation, port address translation. We could set up GRE, IPsec over GRE, routing protocols such as OSPF, EIGRP, BGP. We could set that up with this topology you see in the lower left of the screen. And if those are unmanaged switches, that's only three nodes we're taking up. And if I wanted to do labs on VLANs and adding a port to a VLAN or configuring trunking or spanning tree protocol or ether channel, here, I can do that with four nodes. So we can do all of these things with only four nodes and if we need an extra node, that's also available in the free tier. So I think for your CCNA studies especially, and for most of your CCNP studies, this is going to be a great solution for us. If you want to get your copy of CML for free, just go to this website. You'll be presented with a form that you fill out, and once you submit that form, and the form does ask for your email address, you're going to be emailed instructions like this that tell you a little bit about the free tier. They give you instructions on how to download the software, how to install it as a virtual machine. And personally, I've installed CML on VMware ESXi. That's a bare metal installation. Or for Microsoft Windows, I've installed it in VMware Workstation. And on a Mac, I've installed it in VMware Fusion. Big caveat about the Mac though, if you're going to use VMware Fusion and install this on a Mac, it needs to be a Mac running an Intel processor, not one of the newer M series Apple Silicon chips. So it has to be an Intel processor in your Mac for this to work. 
and you're given installation instructions and some initial setup instructions. And now that we better understand what the free tier is and how to get it, let's go out to a fresh installation of CML free tier and let's create a two router topology and we're going to configure BGP. Here we are in the CML dashboard and we see that we're running the free tier and I want to add a topology. And I'll give this a name of BGP. And we can start dragging and dropping our devices to interconnect them. So I'm going to open up my available nodes and I'm going to start with an unmanaged switch, which does not count against my five node limit. Then I'm going to select an iOS on Linux or an IOL router. Let's do another IOL router and maybe one other unmanaged switch. Now I'm only using two nodes in this topology, so this does not even get close to the maximum. Now let's go to each one of these devices and let's give it a name. I'm going to say that this is SW1 for switch one. Let's say this router is going to be R1. The next router is going to be R2. And finally, our other unmanaged switch, we're going to make it SW2. Now let's interconnect these devices. I'll say, let's create a new link between switch SW1 and router R1. And I don't really care what port I use on my unmanaged switch, but I'll say that on router R1, I want to go into interface ethernet 0 slash 1. And that really is an ethernet interface running at 10 megabits per second. I'll say eth 0 slash 1. Let's create a link. Let's create another link between R1 and R2. And I'll say that I'm leaving R1 on ethernet 0 slash 2, and I'm going into R2 on ethernet 0 slash 1. We'll create that link. And one more to go. Let's add a link between R2 and SW2. And I'm going to be leaving R2 on Ethernet 0 slash 2. And I'm not really concerned about my ingress port on SW2. So I'll just take the default. Now we've created a basic topology. And if I want to start these devices up all at once under lab, I can say start lab. And we could go through this and type in all the individual configuration commands for R1 and R2. But just to speed up this video, because the point of this video is not how to do router configuration, I've got a text document that I'm going to include in the description of this video that has the base configuration for R1 and for R2. We have a check mark next to all these devices, so they're up and ready to go already. Let's right click and open up a console for R1. Let's say open console, and I'll make this a bit bigger. And I'm going to paste in the configuration that I've already done for R1. And this text is in the description of this video. I'm just going to paste that in. And we've got a configuration for R1. I can do a show IP interface brief. And we see that our interfaces are up. And they have IP addresses assigned. Let's do the same thing for R2. Let's do a console. We'll say open console. Press enter a few times. And in the background, I'm going to copy its configuration. And we're going to paste it in. Let's check its IP address information. Show IP interface brief. That all looks good. Now, can I ping R1? Can I do a ping to 198.51.100.1? Let's give it a try. The first one is timing out because of an ARP, but after that, it is successful. Now, by the way, you may do this and you may not be able to ping R1. This has happened to me more than once where everything is correct in the configuration, but I'll need to stop and restart the routers in order for it to actually work. So uh, hopefully you don't run into that issue, but it's happened to me more than once. But we do have connectivity between R1 and R2, so we're ready to configure BGP. Now let's start our configuration on R1. Let's go into global configuration mode, and we can configure BGP with just three commands. Number one, we create the BGP routing process for our local autonomous system. I'll say router BGP, and I'll say that my local autonomous system is 64,500. Then I say who my neighbor is, I'll say that my neighbor is 198.51.100.2, that's R2, and I'll say it has a remote autonomous system number of 64,495. And the third command is a network that I might want to advertise. I want to advertise that network going up to switch SW1, and I'll say network 
and its network address is 192.0.2.0 and it's got a wildcard mask of 255.255.255.0 and we're done with our configuration on R1. Let's give a mirrored configuration now on R2. Let's create the routing process. We'll say router BGP 64495. I'll say that my neighbor is R1, which has an IP address of 198.51.100.1. It is in a remote autonomous system of 64,500. And I want to advertise the network going down to SW2, and that's going to be 203.0.113.0. And I'm going through this quickly because, again, the point of the video is not to teach BGP. I wanted to show you how to create a topology, do some configuration, and then export and import that topology. And we're almost done with our BGP configuration. We've got a 24-bit subnet mask once again. And we're done with our configuration. And it's great news that we see that we have a BGP adjacency that is up between us and R1. So I should be able to do a show IP route command and see that network between R1 and SW1. And indeed we do. It's 192.0.2.0. And it has been learned via BGP. So I'm going to do a write, or we could do a copy run star, and that's going to save our configuration to NVRAM. Now, let's say that I want to export this topology. What I'm going to do is go to nodes. I'm going to select all my nodes, and I'm going to say extract configs. And once that's done, and it says we have one more remaining. Okay, it's done now. Then I'm going to go to lab, and I'll say download lab. And that has been saved as BGP, and in my case it has a 2 because I already have a couple of BGP config files. But it's BGP2.yaml. YAML, that stands for YAML Ain't Markup Language. And that's the format that our CML labs are stored in. And that's how we can save and export a running lab. Let's go back to our dashboard, and I'm going to stop this lab. And I want to show you how to import a lab. Let's say import. And then under files to import, and then we can navigate to the folder containing our YAML file. Here's the one that we just saved. Let's import it now. We'll open that up. We'll say import. We'll say go to lab. And we can start it under lab. We'll say start lab. And this could be on a different machine, remember. But I have exported the uh, topology that we created and configured. And now we're importing it as a brand new lab. So if I were to go back to dashboard, we see that here's my second BGP lab. This is the one I imported, and it's now running. And I started to say I couldn't run both of these at the same time, but actually I could because we're only taking up two node licenses per lab, and I still have an extra license to spare. So I think that's a great way to wrap up this video showing you the flexibility and power of the free tier version of Cisco Modeling Labs.